Hi, my name is Dr. Alex Ramadan and I'm going to give you a tour of our research labs at Oxford Physics today. I work for Professor Henry Snaith and our research is on an area called perovskite photovoltaics. Photovoltaics is a fancy word for solar panels and perovskites are a type of material and we are using them to try and make cheaper and more efficient solar panels and hopefully discover new physics and chemistry along the way. Today's tour is kind of going to be a day in the life of what I would do in the lab. So we're going to start my journey through the labs and I'll explain to you what I'm doing as we go. So now I'm heading into our first lab. Um, this is the lab that we start all of our experiments in and we finish all of our experiments in. As you can see, there are tons of gloves and these things called glove boxes. And basically what they are is these huge boxes and they're filled with nitrogen and they just provide us with an environment to have that's free of air and moisture. So we use these because a lot of our materials are quite sensitive to the environment and this is a good way to make sure that they don't break down basically. Um, so we start here, we weigh out our chemicals and as always with science you plan out what you're going to do beforehand. So I come in here, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I start weighing, like you can see one of my colleagues kind of weighing in the corner. Um, and yeah, these bottles that you can see, they were all chemical bottles and I'll talk a bit more about them later. So as we go around our labs, you're going to see that they're really busy and there's lots of stuff in them. And that's because science needs stuff. Like we have tons of gases, chemicals, we have stuff like gloves and we have loads of tools and we have a lot of equipment. Um, now, our labs aren't normally this empty. We are currently in um, reduced capacity because of COVID-19. So you're not going to see many people, and it's not because many people don't work here, it's just we're only allowed to work on certain days. So we make mini solar panels, which we call solar cells, and I'll call them that throughout. And we basically have this machine we're looking at here, and that machine simulates sunlight and allows us to measure how well our solar cells work if they were going to be put outside. So we basically shine this huge light on them, and then we measure the electricity that comes out of them. And that allows us to work out how well they're doing at converting sunlight into electricity. Now, it's not just enough to know that fact about your materials. You also have to know how they're going to behave for a long period of time because you don't want to put a solar panel on the roof of your house and have it stop working after a day. So we use these boxes you can see here to simulate what it's like for a solar panel to be out in the sun for a long time. And we run them at very high temperatures, about 85 degrees and 60 degrees. And that just lets us see that our materials aren't going to break down if they were put outside. So now we have to head across the road to our labs in the other building because we work in these super old buildings. Um, and so we're kind of spread out. And it's a really nice day today as I'm walking across, but normally it rains, so I typically take this journey a bit quicker. I run across. Um, and if you're carrying any of your experimental stuff, you kind of have to shelter it from the rain. Um, I'm really lucky to work here. The Oxford Physics Department has been home to so many amazing physics discoveries and had so many famous physicists work here. So it feels quite an honor to work in this building. Um, so we're just coming into our lab now. And this is where we do the bulk of our work. We do the, the wet chemistry of what we do. Because even though we're in a physics department, we have a real mixture of different types of science going on. We have chemistry, we have physics, we have engineering. Um, so now what you're seeing is me getting dressed up in what I call my science outfit. And basically we do chemistry and sometimes chemistry is super dangerous and so we have to make sure that we're dressed appropriately so we're not going to get injured when we're doing our work and we're not going to hurt other people. Um, so what I have here is I have some safety glasses on. I personally would say that's the most important part because your eyes are super precious. Then I'm putting this suit on that protects not only me from the chemicals but protects my materials from me because you carry a lot of dust and hair on you and this is a good way to keep that away from your little solar cells, which actually really do not like it when they get dust on them. So it's very important we wear this outfit. As you can see, it's not a particularly cool outfit. 
I uh, wouldn't recommend this to anyone who wants to look their best, but we have to do it. The sacrifices we make for science. Um, so this process actually takes a while, um, but then once I'm done, I'm going to pick up my lab book. As a scientist, your lab book's the most important thing that you have. Everything that happens in my experiments gets written in there. And now I'm going to head into the lab. So what you can see, firstly, I apologize for the slightly bad video. What's going on is I've had to put my phone in a plastic bag so it doesn't get any chemicals on it. So this is filmed through a bag. Um, and you can see that it's very yellow and that's to protect the materials we work on from sunlight. Um, so the lighting will change a lot and I apologize for that. So in here we have more of the glove boxes, but we also have basically an entire chemistry lab in here. And it has these things called fume hoods, which you can see on the right. And that's where we do our dangerous chemical work because it protects us from it. Um, and we do pretty much everything here. So here I am choosing the music I'm going to listen to for my day. I'm putting on some Beyonce. Um, and now I'm starting to get everything ready for my experiments. So kind of like with cooking, it's super important to have everything ready. I'm getting my vials and I'm going to put my chemicals in these vials. Um, so what you're going to see is you're going to see me measuring out my chemicals soon. And the way we do, we kind of make our um, chemicals is we start generally with these powders and you can just buy chemicals off the internet. There are various companies that are kind of like Amazon for chemicals and we buy what we need. And then before I come into the lab, I work out exactly how much I need of each powder. And then I write that in my lab book. I bring my lab book with me and I weigh it out into these little vials. And so once I've weighed out my powders, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some things called solvents on top of them. And what solvents are, they're just liquids. They're another type of chemical, um, but they are not water. Um, so in my work, I use something called dimethyl sulfoxide. Um, but unfortunately, I was having to film on my own. Um, because there was no one who could help me with filming. So you're not gonna see me do that, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, now I'm showing you what I'm gonna use to weigh out my solvents. So this is something called a pipette. You might have heard the word before, but these are like the next level. These are pipettes version like 2.0. They're super accurate, super fancy, and pretty expensive. And it's a very integral part of our experiments is using one of these because we use them to make sure we have the exact right amount of our perovskite solutions. So here I'm showing you something called a spin coater. Um, and basically what we do here is we make our perovskites onto glass substrates and this glass is gonna form the backbone of our solar cell. So here I've just added some solution I'm showing you it working and basically this little chuck kind of spins around super fast and the speed drives off the solution, it makes it evaporate and you're left with a thin layer of our perovskite. Um, so generally speaking after you've made samples the first thing you want to do is just check it's worked well um, and an easy way to do that is to use an optical microscope like I'm showing you here and it doesn't tell you how well things have gone, but it definitely tells you if things have gone really badly. Um, so annoyingly, my samples are very yellow, uh, so you can't really see them in the light. Um, and it's really hard to kind of focus on the screen here. Um, but this is what my samples look like when they are magnified by a hundred times. Um, and it looks quite pretty, but that's really not what I wanted. Ideally, we wouldn't really see anything. Um, and this whole process has actually taken me three hours. <laughs> so uh, finally, I wanted to show you everyone who comes to our labs always wants to go in the gloves. Um, so this is me trying to show you what it's like, but uh, I actually do a really terrible job and I couldn't get my hands in properly because it's really difficult. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching my video. Um, hopefully it was interesting to you. And if you would like more information about the research we do, I've included a link to our research lab at the bottom.